This is Twit. Welcome back to week six of the new screensavers digital cleanse. Another day, another hack. The most recent Equifax hack was not caused by a bad password, but now that our information is on the loose, it's as good as time as ever to digitally cleanse our passwords. I think we can all agree that passwords are a pain in the tuchus, but unless you've given your face over to Apple to hang on their creepy face ID wall, you still need passwords. I can tell you all the basic rules that you probably already know. Don't use dictionary words, use a passphrase, don't reuse passwords, but just because we know the rules doesn't mean any of us are any good at following them. I know I'll feel bad after eating glazed donuts, but I still eat them. If you have followed me on this cleanse this far, then I know you are ready to make a change. So let's do it together. I think the best way to cleanse your toxic password practices is to use a password manager. Some of you, of course, will disagree with me, but my favorite is and has always been LastPass. LastPass lets you store all your passwords in one secure place, so you only have to remember one password, your LastPass password. Don't ever forget that. LastPass will also create secure passwords for you depending on the requirements of the site. You can store profile and credit card information so you can create accounts and pay for things all over the internet in just a few clicks. There's a free version of LastPass, but the premium version is only $2 per month. Free LastPass includes unlimited password storage, and now you can sync across all your devices, which is new. LastPass Premium offers additional password sharing options and support for YubiKey, a physical security key for serious two-factor authentication. If you're unsure of which version is right for you, you can try Premium for free for 60 days. If you already have LastPass and you've committed to the cleanse, your work is not over yet. It's probably time to clean up that mess you've made, including duplicate entries in your vault. LastPass has a deduplicator to help. Go to LastPass Vault, Account Settings, Show Advanced Settings, then click the Remove Duplicates button at the very bottom. And as long as you're already in settings, it's time to turn on multi-factor authentication for your LastPass account. Click multi-factor options and then choose a service to add another layer of protection to LastPass. Next, if you're annoyed by all the two-factor steps that you have to take on your own personal devices, you can do a little cleansing by turning on trusted devices in your account. That way, you won't be asked to provide your multi-factor authentication on your personal iPhone, your iPad, or your laptop. To enable this, go to Account Settings, Trusted Devices. Just know that trusted devices automatically expire after 30 days, so you will have to do this again. If you don't want to use LastPass and you're in the Apple ecosystem, try Apple's iCloud keychain. If you're a Chrome user, you might prefer Google's Smart Lock. A note on Keychain, an ex-NSA hacker recently claimed that Keychain is vulnerable to an attack that could expose your passwords. While this is true, the hacker must first infect your Mac with malware. So try to let them not do that. Don't open emails with attachments from people you don't know. Don't click on suspicious web pop-ups and don't download software from weirdos. These are cleansing tips I think we all need reminding about from time to time. Also, by the time you see this, Apple might have already plugged that keychain hole. Let's hope that they do. Whether it's LastPass, 1Password, Dashlane, iCloud, Keychain, Google Smart Lock, or some other password manager of your choice, once you've set up and cleaned up your system, it's time to clear old passwords from your browser. If you're using Chrome, at the top right, click More, and then click Settings. At the bottom, click Advanced. Under Passwords and Forms, click Manage Passwords. Under Saved Passwords, to the right of the website, click More, and then Remove. The next step in our password cleanse is to change that password on your Wi-Fi network. This doesn't happen so much anymore, but Wi-Fi routers used to come with super secure passwords like admin or password.
password. If you don't already know how to change that, look up or contact your service provider or your router manufacturer and find out how to change the default username and password. And don't forget to make this password secure too. iOS 11 has a new feature that will let you easily share your passwords with friends and family who come to your house. If your guest is also using iOS 11, it will automatically ask you if you wanna share your network password. Your guest logs on and you don't even have to tell them your super secret password. This is a new feature and it doesn't always work, but there's no reason to have an insecure password on your Wi-Fi network. Here is one last cleansing step I want you to take, and this one might be the hardest. It's time to see if any of your personal account data is out in the public domain so you can delete or change your login information. The best way to do that is to visit security expert Troy Hunt's Have I Been Pwned site at haveibeenpwned.com, and pwned is spelled P-W-N-E-D. Just search for Troy Hunt if you can't find it. Enter usernames or email addresses to find out if any of your accounts have been compromised in one of the many, many data breaches. Chances are they have. If you haven't changed the password on those sites, go take some time to do it now. And now my favorite time of this segment, gold stars time. The first one goes to Lysia, who showed me the before and after on her desktop and her Gmail. She got down to 999 unread emails in her inbox. That might seem like a lot still, but she started at 4,340. I sent Lysia an email asking her how many messages she has left to delete but she hasn't replied yet, probably because there are 999 messages in front of mine. Our second gold star goes to Maximiliano, who sent me several digital cleanse tips for emotional sanity. To avoid digital gluttony, Maximiliano suggests not opening your phone right when you wake up or right when you go to sleep. He writes, stop just going through all your apps, sniffing for any kind of stimulating activity. Solution, Create a habit of jumping to your night and morning routine instead of your phone. That's a good advice. My Right now, my night and morning routine do involve my phone, so I will work on that. And our final gold star of the week goes to Allison Sheridan of the Podfeet Podcasts, who writes, you know how if you go through your closet and take out the things you don't wear, you find maybe a half a dozen or so outfits to give away, but... If you take out everything and put back what you do wear, you end up with five times as much to give away. Same thing is true for apps. Do a clean install and only install apps as you go to use them and realize that they're not there. I usually end up with far less than half as many when I'm done. This also means you're not deleting apps, but leaving their P lists and cache files all over the place. You don't want any of those messy P lists all over the place. It can make an old machine run like new. And thanks to everyone who is still digitally cleansing with us. That means you. Thank you. Next week, we're talking hardware because all of us need a little dongle cleansing now and then. Am I right? I'm Megan Maroney, and I host iOS Today every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific and Tech News Weekly every Thursday at 2 p.m. Pacific.